G'day, I'm Chris Neary from the Oracle's mobile platform team. Have you ever experienced this with a mobile application? You've just downloaded a new mobile app, you've launched it, you've started it, and you start to get a little frustrated because you have to wait for the app to, well, start, and then you have to wait for it to load, <laughs> load some data. And you know, you grudgingly continue using the app, but it shutters on with one bar of bandwidth thanks to poor network coverage. Or worse, the device goes offline and you're in the process of entering some data. But when the device comes back online again, your data disappears. Ah! These are the sort of frustrations many of us have with mobile applications. So more importantly, how do we, or you, the mobile developer, how do we build applications that solve all these lag and offline issues and keep our users happy? In this video, we're going to investigate the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Data Offline and Synchronization API to see how it solves all these issues and more. So, you may hear the term offline and think this episode and feature isn't for you, as your mobile users are typically always connected to a Wi-Fi or cellular network. However, even if you're developing a mobile application that is always connected and can always access remote servers to retrieve their data, there's a feature in this API that helps you create an app that is faster to load and more responsive to work with. And that feature is Cache. Caching data locally on the mobile's device has a benefit of improving the mobile app's performance, battery usage, and network usage, because items can be loaded from a remote server and stored in the mobile's local cache to be reused rather than making a million network calls for every data object that you want to access. Now, mobile platforms come with their own local databases that sit on the file system where you can write data to yourself as a developer. But managing that cache of data in the database can become a complex programming problem. As example, at some point, some of the data in the mobile's local cache may expire, and so you need to refresh those items from a remote server. So let's say you have 100 items in the mobile's cache and nine objects go stale. You don't really want to make nine individual network calls to the remote server, which would be slow and eat your battery life up. Nor do you want to fetch all 100 objects again when only nine have changed. Instead, what MCS and the Data Offline and Sync API does is we make one batched call to the remote server and say, here are the nine things I have and I believe have expired in one request. Have any of these things changed? And if so, please give me only the things that have changed in one payload rather than several and I'll update the mobile's local cache. Of course, the Data Offline and Synchronization API, thanks to the cache on the device, also allows your device to go offline. And as long as you synchronize data into the mobile cache, the mobile app can continue to function and our, well, our users are still happy. Now, while the mobile device is offline, in your mobile app, the user may start to modify records in the device's cache maybe creating new records, deleting existing records, or, you know, just updating them. If you, the mobile developer, were writing the code to do this, certainly this is just a few CRUD calls down to the mobile's local database. Actually, nothing too difficult. Yet, when the device returns online, another complex challenge emerges, that of synchronizing the changes back to the remote server and resolving any conflicts. That is, what happens if the object the user was modifying offline in the mobile's local cache was also updated on the server by another user since the data was first fetched to the mobile device? Whose object wins when the data is updated on the remote server when you write back to it? Now, as you guessed, all the challenges we described here are features and solutions provided by the Data Offline and Synchronization API in MCS. Overall, this is a very powerful API provided by Oracle Mobile Cloud Service that greatly simplifies a very complex programming problem and in the end helps you build a compelling mobile app that is fast, works offline and keeps, more importantly, your users happy and productive. So as we discussed earlier, the Data Offline and Synchronization API is an overarching label for a number of different mobile client side and server side components that come together as a collection to provide the Data Offline and Sync API capabilities in MCS. So what exactly are those components? On the MCS server side, the capabilities are built around the MCS custom API and storage API REST web services and their endpoints. Overall, the data offline and synchronization API doesn't care where you get the data from for these APIs, which might be documents or images or data formats such as JSON. All the API cares about is how the data is presented to the mobile client consumed through the custom and storage API endpoints on the server. 
Ultimately, it doesn't matter where the data comes from because potentially it can be badly formed and clunky enterprise data, which you will massage using Node into REST endpoints made up of collections and objects exposed through a custom API or storage API to the remote mobile client. As we will learn in later videos, the data offline and synchronization features on the mobile client side dictates a very specific REST endpoint pattern that your custom and storage APIs must comply to so the data can be shared with the mobile clients. Now, when publishing these REST endpoints via the MCS custom and storage APIs, these will then work with the data offline and synchronization functionality that comes with the native MCS mobile client SDK on Android, iOS, and Windows, which the native code will make use of. Great, so now you have an understanding of all the components that are a part of the solution, both the mobile client side and server side, that need to build a solution that supports the data offline and sync capabilities. Let's then dig into how it all works at runtime so you get a good understanding of what actually happens under the covers. The whole process is kicked off by your mobile app making a request for some remote data from MCS. Ultimately, the mobile app is initiating a request for a REST resource from MCS backed by a customer storage API that you've built and configured. Now, this next part is a mouthful, but it is key, so listen carefully. In making the request, the mobile app's native code wants to retrieve either a REST collection, such as employees, or a specific object, such as Joe Doe, from MCS. Each REST resource is identified by its relating unique URL. In making the request, the mobile app's native code initializes the data offline and sync code in the mobile client SDK. If it wants to consume a custom API on the server side, then it uses the client side SDK endpoint API. Alternatively, if it wants to consume a server side storage API, it uses the client side SDK storage API of the same name. Now, if you're consuming an MCS server side storage API, the client side SDK storage API reads a predefined set of sync policies that specify when the device is online or offline to fetch data from the server or mobile's local cache. Instead, if you're consuming an MCS server-side custom API, the client-side SDK endpoints API reads a set of sync policies that you, the developer, defines, giving you fine-grained control of how and what data to sync. The sync policies can give you control, for instance, over should data come from the mobile's local cache only, the remote endpoint only, a combination of both depending on if the device is online or offline, and many, many more options. It all comes down to sync policies. The sync policies control how, where, and what data should be cached on the local device from the remote MCS custom API and storage APIs. Rather than always fetching the data from MCS, the sync engine uses these policies to intelligently work with the device's cache and remote endpoints to give you these online and offline data synchronization capabilities. Now, what are these sync policies exactly? Well, guess what? That will be covered in the next episode in detail, as the sync policies are the magic source to how the data offline and synchronization API works, and in turn saves you considerable effort in implementing something similar yourself. I hope you'll join me in that very next episode very soon.